Newton Crouch Incorporated presents technical tips. I'm Michael Carruth with Newton Crouch and today we're going to troubleshoot wiring connections on Raven Electronics or any type of electronics. But we're going to be looking at the connections on a Raven 660 on a dry fertilizer spreader with a single belt and a single encoder. Starting out at the controller, we have connections and all these pins here are where the chassis cable connects to the rate controller. And each one of these pins is sending a signal down a cable going to tell the uh, body or the fertilizer spreader what to do. So each one of these pins has a specific function and when you have trouble with any part or any electronic part on it they all lead back to this part right here but you would want to start at the part that you're having trouble with so this is the encoder and what the encoder does is tells the rate controller how fast the rear roller is turning so when this shaft turns it's telling the rate controller that the rear roller is turning and when the rear roller turns that's what's delivering the fertilizer and there's a certain space back there that the fertilizer is going through being adjusted by the gate but the gate stays on one position but there's a certain space back there that gives you your rate so when this turns that delivers a signal to the rate controller telling it how much is putting out per acre so sometimes uh, people call us and say hey something happened I don't have a rate and what we tell them is this is the part that we would start troubleshooting first is this encoder this shaft turning is not sending a signal back to the rate controller so at the end of this cable where the uh, encoder hooks to the flow cable there are three pins um, the key weighs at 12 o'clock, there's a pin at 2 o'clock, there's a pin at 6 o'clock, and there's a pin at 9 o'clock. And have your key weigh at 12 o'clock. There's a little key weigh right there. And if you look real close, there's a little dot right there on it. And then you know you're at 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. And the correct voltage is 5 volts. You would have 5 volts when you put your lead on the ground and on the power you need to have a constant 5 volts and then the signal to the ground is the same thing put your lead on the ground and put your lead on the signal and you'll have 5 volts also if you're grit if you're getting the correct voltage from the rate controller you need to have 5 volts from power to ground and then 5 volts from signal to ground and if you do have the correct power from the rate controller we have found from time to time you can have this connected together and you still don't have a signal coming from the encoder to your rate controller and what we've found is that when we open this up and look down into these pins something's not right about the pins so it's not making a good connection there and one way of troubleshooting that is when you have it together you can jiggle the wire you jiggle the wire a little bit and something starts happening on the rate controller you jiggle the wire a little more and something starts happening on the rate controller or you jiggle it and then it goes back the way it was working before where you don't have anything so then you start investigating this connection here and sometimes these metal pins in here will get pushed over more to one side and you look straight down in it and you can't see all the round gold and you will need to put your pocket knife down in there and pull that metal sleeve over a little bit where you see all the round gold when you look down in there. A further way to test or the next step in testing do a short no short with a small jumper wire between the ground and the signal and you set your rate controller a specific way to do that you put your rate controller on manual you cut on one boom section or 
you know any boom section you got to have a boom section on zero out your spreader constant and you put your density in as one pound and then you also zero out your total applied field and then when you go back here and take a small jumper wire like a paper clip in a U you each time you touch from the ground to the signal then it's going to start counting on your rate controller and each time you make that connection um, it'll jump up like 50 pounds or you know 30 pounds or whatever it might be but each time you make that short no short connection it's going to the total applied is going to increase and if that happens if you get that increase then you know all your cabling from here back to your rate controller is good and if you know all of that's good then the only thing left is this part here and um, if all your cabling is good before this going up to the rate controller then that leads you to believe that this is bad so what I like to do is once I've um, did the short no short test here is I like to take this off and get it in my hand and put this connection back together put this connection back together and then go up there in the cab with it connected here and just turn this by turning that you're doing the same thing as doing the short no short test because what's inside this encoder is a plastic disc and all around that plastic disc there's 180 slots and each time a little beam of light goes through that slot it it that creates a pulse and so when you're turning that shaft you're creating pulses going back to the encoder and if it's increasing your total applied's increasing and it's working right if it's not increasing then something's wrong with this encoder so we're at continuing troubleshooting the encoder and we've troubleshot the encoder and the connection to the flow cable to the encoder and we still still don't have the correct voltage so now we're moving up and we're going to test the chassis cable the chassis cable connects the the chassis cable is connected to the 660 rate controller and it's also connected to the battery so as long as you have the chassis cable connected to the 660 rate controller you can test the pins on the chassis cable and like the connection where the encoder goes you have pins 11 12 and 13 that you should have five volts of power on and so I always use a drawing whenever we get into this troubleshooting you need to have the drawing with you to verify don't just use this video to verify when you go to testing this part you want to have uh, a raven drawing and make sure you're testing the right pins but um, this connection here should have the five volts also you'd want when you touch your lead to ground ground to power you want five volts and ground to signal you'd want five volts if you did that then you would know that you got correct power coming from the rate controller going through this cable and if that's correct then you might look at where these two connections go together just like the connection that we had with the encoder those three prongs if something was wrong there would be um, a, you know if it wasn't making good connection you would have a problem here with these pins and from time to time we find where these one of these pins might be pushed back um, down in this part of this cable there's um, a lock and sometimes I don't know if the, when they're made or when they're being put together or when we actually go to assemble them or somebody's taking them apart in the field and put them back together but something happens and it's possible that one of these pins gets pushed back and if that happens you just take your pair of needle nose pliers and just gently pull it out till it gets to the same level as all these other pins I mean if you look down in it and you see one's pushed back it's kind of obvious that it's pushed back and then you could connect it back together and then go back and test this again and see if you have your five volts that we had talked about previously 
Technical assistance is available online 24-7 on our YouTube channel or our website, newtoncrouch.com. You can call us at 800-241-1350, Monday to Friday, and speak with a real person. No recorded messages. Our knowledgeable staff will be glad to assist you. Proudly, Made in America, a family-owned business since 1940, Newton Crouch.